Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Uh, should I say happy Easter? Praise the Lord. Can we take care of this humming? Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Good morning and God bless you. Uh, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Amen. Now, can we do it properly? Can we do it better? Happy Resurrection Morning. You know I said that. Praise the Lord. Because the truth is, the word Easter, hello, appears only once in the Bible and it's only in the King James Version. No other Bible uses the word Easter. You only find Easter in the King James Version of the Bible. Praise the Lord. And I think that's Acts chapter 12 verse 4. And that word actually means Passover. Hello. So what we are calling Easter is not Easter. What we are celebrating is his resurrection. So I'd rather say it's a resurrection Sunday that says an Easter Sunday. Am I communicating? Amen. Amen. So can we jam our hands together for Jesus? Amen. You know, the truth is, what makes you a Christian is not the church you attend. It's not that you were born a Christian. Amen. Amen. I normally like to say this. Jesus was born in the manger, did not make him a donkey. If you are born in the bakery, you don't become a loaf of bread. So if you are born into a Christian home, it does not make you a Christian. You just have a Christian name. What makes you a Christian is not that you are born a Christian. It's not that you attend a particular denomination. It's not even that you have answered the altar call. What makes you a Christian is that you live by the word. Hello. Moses said, that what they will distinguish the people of God from the rest of the nations is that they keep the laws and the statutes of God which has been delivered to them. Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth. The word sanctify means separate. So what makes us different from the average individual is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Are we together? You are not a Christian if you are not doing the word. You are not a Christian if the word is not guiding your life. Amen. Amen. So that's why we live by the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Before you take your seats, we're going to do two things quickly. Number one, media moments. Pick up your phones if you have one. And if you have data, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Connect to the Refiners Church on Facebook. This service is being streamed live. And what are you going to do? Number one, you're going to share. Number two, if you've not subscribed, subscribe. Number three, like and comment. Praise the Lord. God says it is good to share. Hallelujah. So can we do that quickly? So at the moment you have done that, your phone should go to flight mode. Hallelujah. There's this song we used to love singing. He paid the debt. He did not owe. And I owe the debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. Now I sing a brand new song of amazing grace. Lord Jesus, pay the debt that I could never pay. You know, sister.
sister was leading prayer and she said, when I see the tomb, one thing comes to my mind that I should have been there. Yes, sir. Amen. He paid the debt he did not owe. He paid the debt that I could not pay. I needed someone to take away the judgment, the penalty, the yoke of sin. And Lord Jesus paid the debt that I could not just pay, but I could never pay it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is someone glad for that? Yes. That I could never pay. He paid the debt. He did not owe when I owe the debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I see a brand new song. Amazing grace. Bibles to the book of First Corinthians, chapter 15. First Corinthians, chapter 15. We're going to take the reading of God's word standing. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was. I'm sure if Jesus gave me a physical, you will stand. So let's be upstanding for the reading of God's word. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. Then we'll read verse 12 to 17. Are we there? Are we there? For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried, and that he rose again, on the third day according to the scriptures. Verse 12. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some say among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up. If in fact the dead do not, raise, do not rise, for if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Anoint my lips of clay. Make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer. Enable me to declare your counsel to speak your word as I ought to. Let me deliver to someone a word in due season in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God come with power, come with authority. Let it gain entrance into our hearts and let it deliver glorious results into our lives in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, somebody says amen. That amen is sounding like Fabu Shake a Leg. Yeah. Amen. amen. That one is sounding like half chicken wing. Yeah. I want the one that is shouting like, you know, that is sounding like turkey drumstick. Yeah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. Good morning and God bless you. You are looking very nice. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Welcome to Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. You know he didn't die on Friday. Oh. Hello. You know there are some places that on Friday they dimmed the lights. They covered some stuff. And they carried a morose face. And they said Jesus don't die. No. He died. He rose. Never to die again. Hallelujah. He didn't rise today. He's risen more than 2,000 years ago. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. Glory to God. He does not die every Friday of the Easter week. Then rise again on Sunday. No. No, 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 no. He's risen. Come on, say it. He's risen. He's risen. Amen. For death could not hold him captive, even in the grave. Jesus is Lord, even in the grave. Jesus is Lord. Are you sure about that? For death could not hold him he will be in the grave. Jesus is Lord. He will be in the grave. Jesus is Lord. Please hear me. All men die. How many of you know that? You see, what makes Jesus unique is not that he died. Because all men die. What made him unique is that death could not hold him down. What makes him unique is that death had no power over him. All great men met with death and they died. Talk to me. Buddha died. Muhammad died. Confucius died. Alexander the Great died. Pharaoh died. Amen. Julius Caesar died. Mark Antony died. But when death met with Jesus, death died. Oh, you didn't get it. Oh, death, where is your sting? They say, the Bible says, had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Satan thought that by killing him, he would have killed life. But instead, life killed death. Am I talking to someone? Glory to God. Glory to God. We are not serving a dead God. Amen. We are serving a living God. Hallelujah. He's the author of life. In him is life. He said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Only the person that owns it can say that. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning I want to talk to you about the power of Christ's resurrection. If you want to clap, please clap. Don't threaten us with clapping. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I said earlier, the word Easter hmm, is not in the Bible. I'm going somewhere. So I'm not here to give you an Easter message. But we know that what the, what the world celebrates as Easter is the fact that he rose. That's why this morning I'd rather talk to you about his resurrection. Like I said earlier, all men die. Amen. All men die. 
but only one lives after death. He said, I'm he that was dead, but now is alive and lives forevermore. Now, of what importance, of what significance is Christ's resurrection to the believer? I'm just going to mention three things this morning and get out of your face. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First of all, I want you to understand that Christ's resurrection is the foundation and the basis of the gospel message. I'll repeat that. Christ's resurrection is the foundation and the basis of the gospel message. The resurrection of Jesus is fundamental to our faith. When you say something is fundamental, you are actually saying that if you remove that, that thing can't exist. Are we together? Christ's resurrection is fundamental to the Christian faith. Are we together? Glory to God. I'd like us to look at verse 12 of our text one more time. There's something I'd like you to see. The Bible says, Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, that is to say, any message that is preached that does not center on the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not gospel. The message that the old believers, the message that the earlier Christians preached was what? The resurrection of Jesus. Their message and their ministry centered on one essential fact that Christ is risen. Hallelujah. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 2 You know many times we talk so much about Christ died, Christ died, Christ died. But I discovered that the early believers, the apostles and the early believers, they talked more about his resurrection. So Acts chapter 4 verse 2 says to us, Being greatly disturbed, that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Now that was Peter and John. What did Peter and John preach? What did they preach? Resurrection. Their message of resurrection troubled the Jews of their days. Troubled the Sahindri. They were not preaching what we preach. They were preaching his resurrection. Am I talking to someone? Glory to God. I read the good news Bible. Good news says, they were annoyed because the two apostles were teaching the people that Jesus had risen from the dead, from death, which proves that the dead will rise to life. Amen. Maybe that's the difference between the church then and the church now. In verse 33 of Acts chapter 4, the Bible says with great power, the apostles gave witness to what? The resurrection of Jesus. And great, great grace was upon them. I wonder what the church would be like if we went back to preaching Christ and him resurrected. The message of the gospel hinges on one fact that Christ is risen from the dead. Christianity rests on the fact that Christ is risen from the dead. 
Hallelujah. Number two. Number two. Glory to God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 17. It says, if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Hello? If Jesus did not rise from the dead, all what we are calling faith is useless. Is to no avail. But most importantly, he says, we will still be in sin. Can I, can I talk to somebody? Let's understand what the Bible is saying here. Now, we normally say, and the Bible also says that, that Jesus died for our sins, right? Great. But the Bible is saying that if Jesus did not rise, his dying for our sins would be immaterial. Why is that so? If Jesus died and did not rise, then he will be dying for his own sins. Because the soul that sins must what? Must die. His rising again is proof that he himself was without sin. It is also proof that God accepted the sacrifice that he made. If he did not rise from the dead, it implies that God did not accept his sacrifice. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4 verse 25, Romans 4 25. Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Hallelujah. It says, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. He was delivered for our offenses and was raised for what? Our justification. Now, let's understand what the Bible is saying. If we go back to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4, three things are meant concerning Christ's sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Three things are mentioned concerning Christ's sacrifice. Right? Number one, Christ died for our sins. Number two, he was buried. Number three, he was raised to life. So there are three aspects, three elements of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. He died to pay the penalty for our sins. Hello. When he died, he paid what? The penalty for our sins. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become what? The righteousness of God in Christ. So when he hung on that tree, remember Jesus was the son of God. Jesus had immortality in him. Jesus was unkillable. Jesus was undiable. Am I talking to someone? He said, no one can take my life. I lay it down and I pick it up. Jesus would have hung on that cross and never died. The only reason he could die was that he had to take our sins when God placed upon him all the sins of mankind then he could die am I communicating he became our sin offering glory to God Isaiah chapter 53 I think that should be verse 12 ok sorry verse 10 he said yet it pleased God yes it pleased the Lord to bruise him he was put, he, he has put him to grief. 
when you make his soul an offering for sin. So what Jesus did on the cross was like, you know, the Jews in the Old Testament, when they sinned against God, they would get a lamb or a bull. They will lay their hands on the bull, confess their sins, literally transfer their sins to that animal and that animal will die in their stead because the soul that sins shall die. So what Jesus did on Calvary's cross was to pay that price to make sure the legal requirements for our forgiveness had been provided for. Am I communicating? So after he did that, he was taken down from the cross and was buried. Praise the Lord. His burial was to vanquish our foes. Amen. You know, when the Bible talks about Jesus defeating the devil, where did he defeat the devil? In the grave. The Bible says he went down to hell. Amen. He took captivity captive. He triumphed over them. He made a public spectacle of them. Ephesians says he ascended on high taking captivity captive. He goes on to say but he he ascended means he first descended. So when he descended he went into the depths of hell into the belly of hell. That was when Satan discovered his grave error. You see, if he did not die, he could go to hell. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. If he did not die, he can't go to hell. And if he did not go to hell, he cannot defeat Satan. Hallelujah. Praise God. So he had to go to the grave. In going to the grave, he paid the price. He paid the price. Sorry, he defeated the enemies of mankind. Are we still together? Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 to 20, that Jesus went into hell and he preached to the souls of those who had departed. Now, no one can enter heaven except he goes to the cross first. No one can enter the kingdom of God without salvation. So the question is, what happened to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the patriarchs that lived before Christ sojourn on earth. The Bible says Jesus had to go down to hell. Amen. And present himself to each and every one of them. And then preached Christ to them. So he went to David and said, David, you know the Messiah, they said, will come from your lineage. I am he. Do you believe in me? David says, yes, I believe. He says, follow me. He went to Abraham. He said, I'm he. He said, remember him that appeared to you, that ate with you, that spoke to you, and your wife conceived, even when she was past age. He said, I'm he. I'm the Messiah. Do you believe? He said, I believe. He said, follow me. The Bible says he went to hell and he preached to the saints that were held captive. Every one of them who had not known Jesus, everyone who had been waiting for the coming of Messiah, he preached to them. And that's what the Bible means. He led captivity captive. He plundered hell. He went to hell to take back your victory. Amen. The reason he was buried was so that he can take back your victory. The reason he was buried was so that he can take back your prosperity. The reason he was buried, he can take back your lifting. He went to Satan's headquarters. He spoiled pre 
principalities and powers, he made an open show of them, triumphing over them through the cross. He was buried to vanquish our foes. Amen. But you see, if he remained in the grave, we would have still gone to see him there. You know, when people say, are you sure Christ rose? Let me tell you the truth. If Christ did not rise, his body will be in a museum. Ah, they're looking at me. You know why his body will be in a museum? His soul cannot be caught. <laughs> dust you are, unto dust you will turn. But the word of God became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So he was not made from dust. He was the word of God. And the word of God does not pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God will not pass away. So if he never rose and ascended with his body. You will go to Jerusalem. When you go on pilgrimage. You will say that's Christ's body. This is over 2,000 years. It has still not decayed. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Am I talking to someone? Then he rose. The Bible says he was raised for our justification. Listen. When someone commits an offense, even though he's forgiven, the stigma of the offense still hangs on him. True of us. Eh? If someone was arrested, taken to court, hello, was adjourned to be guilty, but now the court decides to pardon him. If he's walking on the streets, they will still call him sin a thief. Hello? Come on, walk with me. Am I right? The stigma of the offense will still be on him. And God wanted us to be able to stand before him blameless. Amen. So he needed to justify us. In other words, present us righteous as if we have never, ever, ever sinned. So when Christ rose from the dead, was to give us justification. To present us before God as if we have never blundered in life. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? Glory to God in the highest. So he needed to rise. Amen. He needed to rise. If he had not risen, you would still be in your sins. You would still be called a sinner. Hallelujah. And number three. The third implication or the third significance of Christ's resurrection is that on that day he rose, a new dimension of power was released. Ah, somebody's not with me. Hello. On the day that Christ rose from the dead, a new dimension of power was released on the earth. How many of you are with me? Now walk with me. I want to show you something. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. Romans 1 verse 4. The Bible tells us Christ was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. So two things we see in that verse. The Holy Spirit was involved in Christ's resurrection and power was also involved. See, Christ was proven to be God's son as he claimed through his resurrection from the dead. And that resurrection took place at the instance of the Holy Spirit and through the manifestation of God's power. Are we together? Come on, walk with me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Romans 8, 11. 
if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. So the Holy Spirit raised Christ from the dead. Nobody needed to go to his grave and pray for him. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. Before Jesus came on earth, before Jesus came to pay the price he had to pay, I believe he went into, there must have been a boardroom meeting in heaven. So the father says to the son, you will go to the earth and you will die for my creation. You will die for their sins. So okay, no problem. I'm there to do your will. But Holy Spirit, you know I can't do it without you. Will you go with me? The day he was to start his ministry, who showed up? The Holy Spirit. Descended upon him in bodily fashion as a dove. And the vo voice of affirmation came, this is my beloved son. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself as a sacrifice for sins. Which means Jesus could not climb that cross without the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, when I'm ready to do my ministry, I will trust that you will show up on time. Holy Spirit, when it's time to go to the cross, I will trust that you will be there on time. So he went to the cross by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he had to depend on the Holy Spirit that when resurrection morning comes, the Holy Spirit will show up. And it was right on time. Listen to me. He's dependable. Oh, you didn't hear me. He is dependable. He is reliable. Amen. How many of you know he's our Emmanuel? Hallelujah. Jesus said, I will not leave you like orphans. I will send you another comforter. That comforter is in the person of the Holy Spirit. I will send you a comforter, the spirit of truth. He's reliable. So Jesus was raised by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And wherever the Holy Spirit shows up, what shows up? Power. Are we together? He was raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit with power. Glory to God. Glory to God. So the question is, is this the same power by which Jesus operated on the earth? Is this the same power by which Jesus walked on water? Is this the same power by which Jesus raised the dead? Is this the same power by which Jesus fed the multitude? It doesn't appear to be so. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 and 20 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So that scripture seems to suggest that a particular dimension of the power of God was released in raising Christ. Am I talking to someone? He said that power which he what? He walked when he raised Christ from the dead. So the power with which he raised Christ from the dead was not yet available. Okay. Let me read easy to read version. Are you with me? Glory to God. It says, and you will know what God's power is very great for us who believe. It is the same as the mighty power he used to raise Christ from death. Is that talking about the power with which he used to steal the storm? Eh? Is it the same as the one he used to steal the storm? Is it the one he used to walk on water? Is it the one he used to raise the dead? He said there was a particular power that God released to raise Christ from the dead. I hope you know that 
all of hell eh, would have gathered having missed it at his death they would have done everything to keep him from rising then God mustered the entire forces so he exerted his power in a dimension that was different from everything that mankind had known till that point am I talking to somebody if you get me see I hear you so he said he exerted that power to raise Christ from the dead and seated him in high places glory to God glory to God that's why the whole the, the Roman says if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead eh? so he's simply saying that it's not the same Holy Ghost that uh, Elijah was using <laughs> It's not the one Elijah used to raise people from the dead. It's not the same Holy Spirit that Jesus used to cast out the demons from the gathering. This manifestation, this dimension was not yet in operation. Listen to me. The power of God manifests in levels. Hello? It operates and manifests in levels. Okay. Walk with me. You guys are looking at me strange. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Acts 433. Eh? He said, wait what? I thought you were there. Acts 433. If you are there, say I'm there. Okay. Want to go with what? Which what? Which what? So if there's great power, there's small power. There's regular power. Eh? There might be greater power. Talk to me. So that is proof that the power of God is in what? Job chapter 26 verse 14. Is God talking to someone this morning? Amen. Amen. Job 26, 14. <laughs> this is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, Indeed, these are the men edges of his ways. He says, How small a whisper we hear of him, but the thunder of his power who can understand. Before that statement was made, the Bible mentions a number of things that God does. Amen. Things that will wow you. Things that will make you say, ah, this God is great. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that is a whisper of power. See, what God does on the earth when God parted the Red Sea and swallowed Pharaoh and his armies, it was a whisper. When God turned flies and insects into an army, it was a whisper. When God turned darkness into warriors, it was a whisper. When fire came down, and consume Sodom and Gomorrah. It was a whisper. He says all these things are a whisper. Of his power. But when he thunders. With the full dimension. The full weight of his power. He says who can stand it. I read the New Living Translation. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, these are just the beginning of all that he does. Merely a whisper of his power. He said, who then can comprehend the thunder of his power? So the power of God is in dimensions. Amen. The power of God shows up on our behalf, in our lives, in dimensions. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to see the description applied to the power that 
was manifested or associated with Christ's resurrection. So the Bible uses words like exceedingly great. That's not a whisper. Hello? He said the exceeding greatness of his power. Amen. Incomparably great. Incredibly great. Hallelujah. So the power of his resurrection, in my opinion, falls in the range of thunder. So the day Christ was raised from the dead, God released his thunder. Because that was the greatest miracle he had to do. When he had to bring Israel out of Egypt, he used power. When he had to bring men out of Satan's clutches, he had to use power. So he released the thunder of his power. And Paul calls that power in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, the power of his resurrection. Now this is where it gets really excited. God releases this power. Hello. Amen. A dimension of power he has never ever released. So what does he do? He didn't say okay I manifested the power. So let me take it back. And keep it till I need it. He said no. <laughs> I'll make it available for you as a believer. He said the exceeding greatness of his power. Which is walking toward us. Which is available for us. Christ's resurrection took us from one dimension and took us to an exceeding great dimension. When he was raised from the dead, he was seated in heavenly realms far far all principality all power all rulers now let me help you understand that okay praise the lord satan is referred to as who the god of this world right now listen to me the original god of this world was adam satan was never created as the god of this world Adam was the God of this world. God created Adam in his image and likeness. God created Adam to rule as God on the earth. Adam committed high treason and lost his place. Literally gave his place to Satan. Are you with me? So, the hierarchy, the scheme of things changed. Before Adam's fall, the hierarchy of things was what? God, Adam, the highest ranking angels. Say, how do I know that? He said, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visited? For you have made him a little lower than what? You have made him little, a little lower than what? Now let me correct you. That word is not angelos it is Elohim's. Meaning, you have made him a little lower than God. The translators found it difficult to write God. So they say angels. If you read more recent translation, you say you made him a little lower than God. Who was complaining? An angel. He said, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him? You made him a little lower than yourself. Everything you have created, including angels, you put under his authority. So Adam lost that authority to the devil. So Satan became the God of this world. Praise the Lord. Satan became the highest ranking being after Jehovah. Proof, the Bible says when Moses died, and the angel Michael, the archangel Michael, who is the highest ranking angel in heaven, when he was contending with Satan, with Lucifer, 
for the body of Moses, he could not bring a reigning accusation against him. Because you see, they understand spiritual authority. They don't run mouth against who is their boss. He could not bring an accusation against him. Instead, he said, the Lord rebuke you. Why? Lucifer has now risen to the position of Adam. And since Adam is senior to Archangel Michael, Archangel Michael cannot challenge Adam. So Jesus came. He paid the price. He defeated the devil. Hello. He rose from the dead. That's why he said, after he rose, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Now go. All oh, say, go in this power. But I need you to understand this. We say Jesus came to take back what we lost to the devil, right? But here is where it gets more interesting. Now, Satan will always have Adam's authority until Adam's lease runs out. The Bible says the earth he has given to the sons of men. So until Adam's reign over the world expires, Satan will still have power. Are you with me? Because it's Adam's authority. All men are not saved. Are they? So Satan will always have power. So if now Jesus gives us back what we lost to Adam, then we'll be made with Satan. Am I talking? And because he has been using that power longer than us, he will beat us. So what did Jesus do? He didn't give us Adam's place. He made us sit together with him in heavenly places far above. He didn't give us Adam's place. He gave us his place. When he rose, we were raised with him. We took our seating in heavenly places far above all principality, all power, all rule, all dominion. Listen to me. Stop looking for what is far below. So you are not operating at the level of Satan. You are operating at the level of Jehovah. For he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become what? The righteousness of God, not Jesus. Hallelujah. So when he rose, God invested everything in him. All his power, all his authority, all his might, he invested it in Christ. And when Christ rose, he took that power. He said, now I have the key. Amen. The key of heaven is in my hand. He said, Peter, I give you what? The keys of heaven. So that Whatever you bind on earth, heaven responds. Why? You have the key. It's no longer heaven that will decide because the key is in your hand. If I give you the key to my house, you stand at my gate and you are calling me, uh, Pastor, I'm at your gate. How do I enter? I said the key is in your hand. I have given you the key so that you can go in and come out at liberty. I have given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. When you stand here on earth, you control the spiritual realm. You see, Adam's territory was from the second heavens. Adam's territory was from the second heavens to the earth. Listen, the Bible says that Adam used to have fellowship with God in the cool of the evening. Where? How? I believe that Adam, the, 
There are days Adam will just stroll, will enter the second heavens. Then God will come from the third heavens and they will meet. How do I know? Enoch walked with God to the point that he was not. He could not be found among men. He translated from this natural plane to a spiritual plane. So I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth. What is he saying? He said, Adam, child of God, you can sit in your sitting room and be deciding what is happening in the second heavens. You can control anything from that level down. Scripture has proof upon proof. You see, when power leaves a man, it does not dry up immediately. It goes slowly. That's why some people are backsliding and they are still manifesting anointing. The spirit has left them, but they do not know. They will just wake up one day and the founder is dried up. So when man's fell, it was not instantaneous. It was going little by little. It got to a day. There was a man by the name Joshua. He was fighting a battle. He fought the battle and night began to come. And he says, I have not finished destroying my enemies. So he said, son, stand still. He didn't say, father, in the name of Jesus. He didn't say, I pray that the sun will stand. He said, son, stand still. Moon, moon, don't move from here. If Joshua, who is not seated in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, can do that, how much more you, how much more me, glory to God. Glory to God. You are not ordinary. You are better than you think you are. You are much more than you think you are. Glory to God. If the same spirit. Hallelujah. If the same spirit. That raised Christ from the dead. Dwells within you. Is not outside you. It's not on your pastor alone. The spirit is within you. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within you, how will he, not with that same spirit, quicken your mortal body? You are a life carrier. I'm speaking to everyone who has sickness in your body. You are a life carrier. You are a life carrier. Life cannot be you and death at the same time. Am I talking to someone? Amen. Life cannot be you and death at the same time. That womb will come alive. That brain will come alive. Glory to God. Am I talking to someone? Can I give one more scripture around? Hallelujah. I don't serve a dead God. He's not dead. He's not dead. Yours might be dead. Yours might have died on Friday. Waiting to rise today. But mine rose more than 2,000 years ago. He rose. And he lived forevermore. And I'm a living proof. That resurrection is real. I'm a living proof. That resurrection is real. Because in me is the resurrection power. Now listen to this. In Matthew chapter 27. From verse 50. To verse 53. The Bible tells us. Hello. That Jesus as he hung on the tree. He shouted. With a loud voice. And released his spirit. No he said Eloi. Eloi, Lama Sabachthani. He released his spirit. Amen. And the Bible says the moment he released his spirit, there was an earthquake. The veil, the curtain in the temple was rent in two. Signify that you no longer need eh, an emissary. You no longer need a go between. Signify that the high priests, the Levitical system had been abolished. 
that I don't need a prophet to talk to my father. I don't need a prophet to hear from my father. I have direct access. I come by the blood of Jesus. He said he granted us access through the blood. So when he rent the veil, he said there is no longer outer court, inner court, and holy place. Everyone is permitted to come in. He says when the veil was rent, there was an earthquake. And I love this part. Amen. He said the earthquake was so severe that tombs were open, graves were open in Jerusalem. Am I talking to somebody? And all the dead body inside the grave, they were raised to life. Amen. They were raised to life. Hallelujah. They were people who heard of Moses, but had never seen him. But when Christ died and rose, they saw Moses face to face. You know the Bible says he went and preached to the captives. Satan had held Moses in one corner. He said, you killed a man. You can't enter heaven. And when Jesus went and preached to him, he said, I am the prophet who you said that the Lord will raise from the brethren. He said, I am he. He accepted Christ and he took Moses. The Bible says all the dead were raised to life. Hallelujah. But you know what blew my mind? He said they remained in the grave till Christ was raised. So I ask myself, how can someone be raised to life and still be inside the grave for at least two days? I think that life was spiritual life. He said, we're dead in our trespasses and sins. But Christ has raised us to life. So they found salvation. Their spirits that were dead came to life. But the physical body could not come back to life. Because the resurrection power had not been released until he who is the resurrection and the life comes back to life because the Bible says Christ is the firstborn from the dead so resurrection morning the angel came he said are you ready he rolled away the stone and he marched out of that grave and everyone who had been dead Abraham Moses Joshua Jacob Isaac the patriarchs they all came out from their graves who gave them bodies I don't know their bodies had decayed turned to complete dust the bones no longer existed because they have been there for thousands of years but when resurrection power came life swallowed up deaths I still don't get it. How they were able to develop bodies. We're not talking of someone that died one year ago. The Bible says they got up. And they went into Jerusalem. Don't you get it? They were not spirits walking. They were men, men. They entered Jerusalem. They went to see their descendants. Hi, 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 hi. I'm sure Abraham would have said, Lord, you said you give me the promised land. Moses would have said, that land you told me to take them in. There. You said, only see that I will not enter. Lord, my feet will enter today. So Moses entered. He walked in Jerusalem. He said, I fulfilled my mission. I have stepped upon the land. Now listen, you can't carry resurrection power and death survive around you. When resurrection power is released, whatever has died is dying. Have dead itself around you will come back to life. It 
doesn't matter how dead, how dead, dust and buried, it will come back to life. I see life springing up for someone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I say I see life springing up for someone. Whatever was there is coming back to life. Dead wombs are coming back to life. Dead brains are coming back to life. Dead businesses are coming back to life. Dead graces are coming back to life. If he died, is resurrected this morning by the power of resurrection in the name of Jesus. I, I, I'm going to give you a few minutes to pray. I know this kind of days, everybody's thinking of the alubosa. Eh? The fry fry. Amen. So that I don't spoil your party. I'm going to give you a few minutes. You are going to lift up your voice. You are going to tell God, resurrection power has come upon me. Therefore, nothing can die around me. Whatever has died, it must come back to life. Whatever has died, it must come back to life. Come on, go ahead. Lift up your voice and talk to him. I commit everything in my life, everything around me that has died. I have resurrection power. I have resurrection praise. Lekos Catalia. Embronos Cateri Gados. Shebali Gadagadia. Reketos Kali. Empalito Sobrenos Cate. Rabados Cateria. Emparacando Nobosa Baragade. Sheketos Poliprane. Manta La Posca Ribade. Empalito Ribadagade. Sheketos Cariande. Empalito Ribadai. Shegedos Cateli Catolia. Rapatele Tosca. Ekeli Pranos Cate. In the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. In that spirit is in me. Therefore, life, 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 life is being released into my mortal body. Life is being released into every area, every dimension, every aspect of my life. Life, 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 life. La Catali Cata, Emparos Catelia, Rabadagados of Alagadia, Reketos Cate, Empalica Sepreno, Racantelia. He can tell the carry my day. Shake the gate of so many gate. Rabandi go to Oscar. Anta le Oscar riba day. Shake the gate of so many gate. Rabande empali gada. Le Oscar riba da gadiya. Rabanta li gade. Shake the Oscar yante. Empali kari ba Oscar ta. Le carry ba da gadiya. Le carry ba da gadiya. Rabata ta ta. Reke Oscar te. Empalia dale koskari badagade, sheke dos kori badagadi. Empali kari badagados, la kori ande kedo tapa, reke dos kateli kata. Empranando supre kete, rapata li kotos, sheke de kedo, sheke de kedo, sheke de kedo, shaka taka taka ta, rikateli kata. from the dead and is living in me the same power with which he raised Christ from the dead that power is in me is operating around me and by reason of resurrection power I decree 
that everything that is dying everything that has died everything that is suffering death around me comes alive comes alive comes alive comes alive comes alive by the power of resurrection in the name of Jesus say my mental faculties my body my organs they are life they are life they are receiving life I have wisdom I have understanding by reason of the life of God my finances my business they are life everything my hand touches from today receive life receive life receive life receive life receive life by reason of resurrection power in the name of Jesus if you believe that shout hallelujah how many living people do we have eh? hallelujah how many of you know you are alive not biologically alive but alive with life from today wherever you go life goes there who am I talking to? I speak into someone's life that from this morning, wherever you enter, no matter how dead that area is, that situation is, the moment you enter, life is released. You carry life from today, wherever you go. You become a communicator of life. In the name of Jesus. Whatever you touch, even though it was dying, it comes alive. I say comes alive. I say comes alive. I say comes alive. In the name of Jesus. Say I have life. Not just life. But I have it. More. More. More more, more abundantly. If you believe that, jam your hands together for Jesus. Are you glad he rose? Are you glad he rose? 